Hello, Gen Com 1 students. This is our week six update. Our date is uh, the 9th of March. Um, we are almost at the halfway point of the course. Next week will be week seven, which is halfway through. Um, so keep up the good work. I know it, it's, it's a heavy load. That's why it's a four credit class. Um, and sometimes it's really tough to juggle the lecture content and the lab content, but they do go together and you don't pass the class if you only focus on one or the other. So if you need help with time management skills, some of the people in your class are really good at it. Um, in Discord especially, there's a lot of conversations going on where people are helping each other to stay on track. So if you're not paying attention to that, I really recommend that you do. Um, but you can also come and talk to me uh, if you're struggling with your time management skills or your note taking skills or whatever um, you know might be getting in your way. All right, so let's jump into it. This week in Alex, we have objective four. And don't forget the topic list is in Blackboard already for you. This is what it looks like. Um, there's weirdly one little topic on the next page um, about double displacement. So don't forget that one too. That, but these topics are all very much related to what you're doing in lab this week and next week. All right. And so understanding these things is going to help you immensely in completing your laboratory work uh, over the next two weeks. Um, there are videos that accompany every one of these topics. All right. And so let me show you those. They're going to be in our course documents and they're under module two. So what I have done is I left in the important topics that apply to objective four and I added in a couple more at the bottom. Objective three topics from last week, I moved into a separate folder. If you are looking for material that's older than that, then you wanna go to course documents and archive. So I have separated only what is really important for you for this week's objectives. But if you're catching up still, then you're gonna to wanna to look either in objective three folder um, in module two, or you could even look in the archive folder. Okay, so um, these videos are meant to be used with notes. Some of them like essentially here's chapter three notes. Okay, so these topics in Alex that are listed as chapter three, those are the notes you would go to. Chapter four notes are farther down. Okay, and so you want to have those printed out or accessible to you in some fashion so you can take notes without having to rewrite every single thing on the slides. Um, all right, and so then in lab, we are working on, oh, here's my schedule. If you're in group A this week, you get to come into the, the lab and do this chemical reactions experiment. Um, by the way, if you are retaking the course, this experiment is entirely different. It has been rewritten two or three times um, in the last year. So don't assume you know what's going on. Go ahead and read it and really look at, at what you're doing. Okay, so essentially there's two parts to this. The first part, we're gonna learn how aluminum metal gets recycled into alum, which is a really useful uh, component for like water treatment and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so you're gonna actually make uh, you're going to actually recycle the aluminum yourself. Um, this needs to be done in the hood and there's some really important safety considerations like you should always have your goggles on because the KOH you use is very, very caustic. That means it dissolves flesh. Um, same thing for the sulfuric acid that you're going to use, okay? Um, so pay attention to the warnings in here. I tried to make them as obvious as possible, but I have noticed a lot of the time with all the immense amount of reading oh we have God. to do in an online class it frequently people skip over these things okay and then the other part of this is investigating a bunch of different chemical reactions where your task will be to figure out whether each one is a double displacement single displacement decomposition or combustion so that video about types of reactions the pink one here this one is pretty important in figuring that out. So if you don't watch that before lab, it's going to be pretty tough for you to work through the report after lab. This part of the instructions applies to all of the material after it. So you need to read these instructions um, all the way to the reactions to be tested. 
They tell you how to test each of these reactions. And then we also have some handy videos. So we, I added this one last week, Mr. Newman found this and it's a really good description of how flame tests work. You're gonna be doing that a few times in the lab. So watch this video first. You're also gonna be using vacuum filtration in order to isolate your alum from the aluminum recycling project. Um, so you need to watch a video about how to set that up. And then there's also a video to help you with writing reactions and stuff in the pre-lab. Finally, we're gonna be using a Bunsen burner to set up the flame test. So these images are meant to help you understand how to light a Bunsen burner. So they're handy to keep with you as well, okay? And, and besides the videos, as usual, you also have the pre-lab to do, all right? Uh, for my students, I prefer that you do that in your lab notebook and turn in your yellow sheet when you walk in the door. Remember that in all cases, late pre-labs are not accepted. So you need to get that done before you come to lab. Now for group B, what you're going to be doing is essentially the chemical reactions that group A is doing in lab now, the ones you're going to do next week, you're going to take them. And um, so you need to look at the chemical reactions procedure as well as print this page out, right? Remember you can print for free in the learning commons. They've been up all semester. So you need to actually print out this worksheet. Don't do it on notebook paper. And you're going to um, first categorize all 19 reactions should be listed somewhere on this page. It's one of these types of reactions. So you're gonna categorize each one. And then once you do that, so say I have chosen, I don't know, five single displacement reactions, then those five reactions only are the ones I'm going to work on for question six that tells you to balance the chemical reactions that are all singles, okay? So this needs to be handwritten. We will not be accepting typed work. Um, and you're gonna actually turn this in on Blackboard as well as in person. I'm actually going to grade it personally for, for my students on paper, but I need you to turn it in whenever your lab is scheduled on Blackboard because what we're finding is a lot of people are waiting until the day of their actual lab to do things instead of, so like, for example, if you're in my Wednesday lab, um, group B is supposed to be doing chemical reaction worksheet on the 10th, that's Wednesday, when you would normally be in lab with me. Um, or before that, if you need to, that's why the materials have been up. Um, a lot of people are waiting until like the 16th to do it, and that does not work because then you're doing two labs in one week. We saw this a lot with separation of a mixture. Some of you waited until Monday and you had lab on Tuesday, or you waited until Tuesday and you have lab on Wednesday. And that doesn't work because you don't have enough time to do the procedure and your crystals needed to sit and dry. You can't tell, test the melting point of something that's wet. Um, so a lot of people were sent back home with the separation of a mixture kit last week or the week before because you weren't ready you didn't have your crystals, you didn't know what you were doing. And so we have to have those kits back in order to get ready for the next set of, of kits that have to go home with you. And so if you are in, um, if you're in group A, your very last chance to return the separation of a mixture experiment and still receive full points for the experiment will be on the 24th of March if you're a Wednesday class. If you are a Tuesday class, it'll be the 23rd of March, okay? Um, if you're in group B, your very last chance to return the kit without points penalty on your report is the 17th. That'll be next week, I think. Um, and that's a Wednesday date. If you are in the Tuesday class, then you need to return it by the 16th. Uh, our technician needs the materials to back in order to produce the rest of the kits for, for experiment 11. So that's our last chance. So if you haven't turned your kit in by that point, the consequence is either the 16th, 17th, 23rd, 24th, depending when your lab is, the consequence for not returning the kit is you lose points on your lab report because we need those materials back. Um, so 
it's a silly reason to lose points. Put it in your calendar that you need to return it. Don't forget it. Make a reminder for yourself in your phone or whatever you got to do to make this work. Okay. If you at this point in time, don't have crystals. You need to be coming to office hours with me or your lab instructor. You need to be sending emails. You should be done. should have been done with this last week at the latest. And a lot of us are still struggling to even understand how to proceed. Um, that means you need to come and see us. You need to come ask for help. You need to describe what you have tried and get some tips for, um, for getting your crystals. Several students have successfully gotten crystals and one person even measured their melting point and it was really, really close to the theoretical, which is fantastic. That means it was a really pure PABA crystallization, which is great, okay? Um, but if you're not in that group of people who have crystals and have tested them or are close to testing them, then, then you need to be coming and getting help because it's overdue at this point, okay? All right, so for the chemical reactions worksheet, again, this is what's actually due this week. If you're in group B, you need to be looking at the chemical reactions procedure. It's the same one group A is doing this week and you will be doing next week. That's the basis for all the reactions that it's all the 19 reactions. Um, and, and you need to do this on paper, handwritten on this form. Um, my students will be turning this into me next week when they come into lab along with their pre-lab for uh, experiment six, but I also want you to upload it when it is due for your lab session this week, if you're in group B. If you're in group A, you're gonna upload it next week during, you know, by the time our lab session is over. All right, this is to help you stay on track. Some of us are having a difficult time with that. And uh, I would hate to see you struggle as we get toward the end of the semester. So we're trying to get you on track before midterms, which are technically next week. Okay, our midterm exam isn't until the week after that, but the middle of the semester is, is uh, essentially next, next Thursday. Okay, so as always, come visit me in my office hours when you have questions, ask in Discord, send me an email, whatever you want to do to communicate, but it's really important that you're staying on track and you're mastering those Alex topics and um, Next week is going to be an open pie period. So it starts Friday after objective four is turned in. This means that if you were behind on anything, you're gonna have that scheduled knowledge check Friday. Okay, so we're gonna look at the schedule here. Um, so here we are, it's currently objective four ends at 3 p.m. Friday. And then you'll find that your um, next scheduled knowledge check, this is that review opportunity that some of us missed on exam one. It's going to be opening at 3.15 on Friday. So right after objective four is due. And you, you need to complete that scheduled knowledge check by the 15th, which I'm pretty sure is Monday. Yep. Monday at three o'clock. That's your window, Friday 315, Monday at three o'clock. It gives you essentially two school days to do it and two weekend days to do it. It should, it's only about 25 or 30 questions. It doesn't take that long. I'm seeing like 30 to 45 minutes, maybe at the longest um, for most people, right? And so this is going to tell you, what do I need to study to be ready for my midterm? It's a really handy thing to know, okay? So it's for your benefit. It does not change the grades that you got on objective three or four. It doesn't change your time goals. It doesn't change any of that. It just lets you know what material you need to focus on for the test. And so then you'll notice from three o'clock Friday until um, what, Wednesday, Thursday. So from three o'clock on Friday until, until um, three o'clock on Thursday, you have access to an open pie review period. This is whether or not you take your practice test, okay? Um, this open pie review period will let you go back and review any topics from the beginning of the semester all the way to midterm. And um, 
it's your opportunity to get ready for the test. So the general way you should be doing this is take that scheduled knowledge check first thing, then go in and review those materials that showed up as being um, something you need to practice. Now, I'm gonna warn you about the scheduled knowledge check. For those of you who had a more robust prerequisite chemistry course before this, you may find when you take the scheduled knowledge check, it's gonna ask you questions about the material we've already done. And if you do very well with that stuff and it doesn't think you need review yet, then it's going to ask you some questions. It's gonna reach into topics ahead of us and it's gonna ask you those questions. Don't worry about that. It's just, it's just trying to calibrate itself to figure out where you are, okay? If, um, if you end up taking the scheduled knowledge check and you don't have any old topics to look at during the open pie, you could work forward. I don't really recommend it unless maybe you know you got a big something coming up that's going to impact your ability to finish objective five or six or what have you. I, I think it's better to instead go into the review panel and just choose topics randomly and practice those. All right. Um, but you can go ahead and work on further material that isn't on the midterm, okay, if you want to. Remember to use the Alex goals here to help you figure out what, what topics go where, okay, that's very handy. Um, so basically topics from prerequisite all the way up to objective four are going to be on the midterm um, with a very big focus on objectives three and four primarily, okay? So that's our plan coming up next week. Um, don't forget to take the, the scheduled knowledge check that opens Friday, closes Monday. Um, I'm not gonna extend the times this time. You guys have uh, all the dates and all of the warnings and you, you've gotta learn to be responsible for your time. It's a really difficult thing with so many online classes, but I know you guys can do it, okay? But um, use that schedule from the syllabus as a checklist. Do it in that order and you'll be successful. All right. As usual, if you have questions, when you have questions, come see me. I'm happy to meet with you. We have two tutors who are also very willing to meet with you and practice things for midterm.